Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2018 Honda CRV, we're going to be showing you how to install the Draw Tight Trailer Hitch Receiver. Before we get into that though, let's just take a couple of minutes, check this out, and make sure it's going to be the right hitch for you. Something I do want to address right off the bat, it seems like a lot of people are curious about, is if by putting a hitch on here, is it going to mess with your hands-free liftgate assist feature, if you happen to have that, if your vehicle's equipped with it. And unfortunately today our model does not have it, uh, so I can't actually show, show it, but I do know from past experience it will still work. It seems like it uh, works for a lot of other people as well. You'll just have to kick your foot to either side of the receiver tube opening and take a little practice, find that sweet spot, but you can get it to open up. And what I've ran into before um, with some later models is Honda actually offers a relocation bracket that'll move that sensor if you're really having a tough time getting it to work. So that's always an option for you as well. With that all said though, having a hitch on the back of your CRV just makes sense. You know, these are super versatile uh, SUVs and people use them to do a lot of different things, whether you're trying to use accessories like a bike rack or a cargo carrier, or even pull your trailer around. Uh, you're going to want a hitch that will be able to accomplish all those tasks and this one is going to be capable of just that. To compare this hitch to some of the others available, um, you have a uh, more hidden style like this one and some visible type ones which will hang down below the bumper. You'll be able to see the whole hitch really and it, it's really just going to depend on what you're looking for. You know with the more hidden type ones they're all pretty similar. You know they're all going to look just about the same, kind of be positioned the same way and all share the same specs and, and things like that. So it's really just gonna boil down to what finish you like the best really, if you're into the hidden style one. Uh, this one is semi-gloss. I'm kind of a fan of the e-trailer one. It's more of a matte black, but um, that's just you know my personal opinion and, and my particular taste. With that said though, um, you know, if you're planning on pulling some, some heavier trailers uh, more consistently um, and that's really all you plan on doing, the advantage that the more visible ones have is that they do offer some higher weight capacity. So if that's something you're thinking about doing, might be worth looking into one of those. Do you want to mention this hitch is going to work with hybrids as well as regular gas model CRVs as well. So kind of all your bases covered there. And with it being a class three, it's gonna have the two inch by two inch opening. This is an extremely common size. A lot of different things are gonna work with it. It is going to use the standard 5 8 pin and clip. Uh, one doesn't come included with the hitch. If you need one, not a big deal. You can always grab it here at E-Trailer. Or a lot of times too, if you end up buying an accessory, you know, like a bike rack, for example, they'll usually come with one. Uh, so just something to think about. The safety chain openings are a loop style and about the perfect size really. You should be able to use just about any size hook that your trailer might have on it. As far as this hitch's weight capacity is going, it's going to have a 525 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating, which is pretty good actually. Uh, that's the amount of weight that's going to be pushing down on the hitch. So that's good for just about any size bike rack or cargo carrier uh, to give you an example there. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's going to be 3,500 pounds. That's the amount of weight that is pulling on the hitch. So the weight of your trailer plus anything you might have in or on it. I do always like to recommend though, it's never a bad idea just to check with your CRV's owner's manual. That way you can make sure your Honda can handle that much weight safely. Now we can grab a couple of measurements and these will help you figure out what type of accessories will work best from the ground to the top and side edge of the receiver tube opening, that's gonna be about 14 inches. So if you plan on pulling a trailer around, uh, chances are pretty good. You can get a ball mount that has uh, a slight rise in it. Probably that two inch range would work for most people. And uh, you know, if you can, if you end up getting an accessory, a straight shank one will be fine. But if you can find one that does have a slight rise in it too, might not hurt, get a little bit higher off the ground there. Give you some more clearance. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, that's going to be three inches, uh, which is really good. You shouldn't run into any issues, but uh, you could use that to help figure out exactly if any folding type accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without hitting the back of your Honda. Aside from that, you know, this is a good all around hitch. It looks good and is capable, lets you do a lot of different types of tasks. 
Uh, as far as the installation goes, it's really not too bad. Um, you will have to trim a small portion underneath your fascia here. Not really a big deal. Um, but for the most part, this just kind of, it bolts up. You know, you don't have to drill anything or, or get too carried away as far as that goes. But if you'd like to hang around, uh, feel free to. We'll go ahead, pull into the garage and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be underneath the back of our CRV and we're gonna to need to lower the exhaust on some to give us some more space to work. And so prior to doing that, I like to take a strap and just run it from side to side. And that way we can kind of control how fast and how far we actually let the exhaust come down. There's gonna be three rubber isolator hangers we need to pop off to let the exhaust come down. So one right here on this muffler, the driver side set up the exact same way. And then we'll have one more towards the front, which I'll show you. But to get these off, you can lubricate them with some soapy water and take a pry bar, or big screwdriver, whatever you got. And work that end off. So then you'll do the same exact thing for the driver side muffler. If you continue to follow the exhaust towards the front of the car, here's gonna be that third one. And with these, it doesn't really matter what end you, you work off. Uh, whatever one's easier for you to get to. These ones are kind of a little trickier to pop off just because you don't have a great point to pry on, but no big deal. With all three of those uh, off, you should be able to loosen up our strap some and let the exhaust come down a little ways. If you look at the bottom edge of your fascia, uh, there's going to be a couple of pushpin fasteners that we need to pull out. Seems like some of these CRVs are set up differently. We have two, others might have more than that, but regardless, you um, need to pull those out. To do that, you can take a flathead screwdriver and just pry underneath the head of it. And sometimes these are kind of get sticky from dirt and stuff getting in there. So just take your time and, and work them out. And we're gonna hold on to these because we will be reinstalling them. Now we can get our hardware in the frame rail. And so if you look at the frame, there's gonna be several holes, two smaller ones. Those are gonna be our attachment points. And we're gonna use this larger opening as an access hole. So what you can do is take a pull wire, all right, feed that through that opening there and you're trying to get it to come out of the access hole there. So sometimes you, you get lucky and they'll drop right out. Other times you'll have to kind of reach up there and help kind of guide it. But what you're gonna do is take a spacer block and slide that over the coiled end and then a carriage bolt. That's gonna thread onto it. And then you can kind of feed that hardware into the frame. So it drops down like that. And for this attachment point, same deal. This one's a little bit easier though because you don't have as far to, far to go. Same hardware combination. And I wanna mention from this point on, anything we do to one side of the vehicle, we're also gonna to do to the other side because it'll be set up the exact same way. At this point, we can trim out a small opening in our fascia. That way our hitch will clear it. So there's a diagram of the instructions uh, that you can follow. I put some tape there and, and drew everything out. Pretty thin plastic, you know, make sure there's nothing behind here that you're gonna hit, there shouldn't be, but not a bad idea to check. Um, I'm gonna use a multi-tool to cut this out. You can use a pair of snips, uh, I've used utility knives. Uh, just be careful if you do that. Dremel tools, pretty much whatever you see fit. So I'll go ahead and get this uh, material removed. We 
got this cut out. You can always smooth up the edges if you want with some sandpaper, uh, utility knife, or something along them lines. But I got a feeling this underbody panel, this little piece will probably interfere. So I'll just remove that material as well. This is almost like, almost like a cardboard almost. So I'm just gonna use my utility knife here and cut that little portion out. Now with the next set of hands, we can get our hitch into position. So you wanna get it, get it up there and then take your pull wires and drop them down through the corresponding holes in the hitch. Start to raise it up and over the exhaust and you'll have to kind of grab out on your fascia and kind of sneak that hitch in behind it. But from there, you should be able to work it into position. Get our bolts to drop down. Once you get both your bolts to drop down, you can remove the pull wire. And then you can take a conical tooth washer, make sure the teeth on the washer are gonna face up towards the hitch. Put it on like that. And you can apply some side pressure to the washer on the bolt to keep it steady if you need to. And then you can take a nut and get it started hand tight. You wanna do one on each side, that way the hitch supports itself while we work on the rest of the hardware. With the hitch supporting itself, um, you know, you can move to the center here. You're gonna have another, uh, some more hardware. You're gonna have the larger carriage bolt from the driver's side. You're gonna put it through like that. Then you can take this big spacer block, put that on. The other conical tooth washer, put that on. And then finally the nut. With all the hardware in place and hand tight, we can come back and snug everything up. So for the bolts here in the frame, you can use an 11 16 size socket. For the bolt here in the center, you can tighten that down with a 3 quarter inch socket. Now that everything is snug, you need to make sure to come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all the hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. What you can do now is take your push pin fasteners and, you know, put them back in and rehang the exhaust. This uh, part is a little bit different. You don't really need a tool to rehang the exhaust. Uh, what I do is just spray it down again with soapy water. And then usually you can just kind of push these back in place by hand like that. But once all of them are secure, uh, at this point, you can go ahead and remove the strap. And one thing that I like to do just to help clean up our installation look is this hardware that was visible. Um, I shot it with some spray paint black just to help kind of make everything blend in a little bit better and a little less noticeable. So you can always do that too if you uh, would like to. But with that said, that will finish up our look at and our installation of the Draw Tight Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2018 Honda CRV.